The Fed printed more money and the stock market rose again. This is giving me a serious case of deja vu. We've watched countless economic indicators showing extreme weakness and in some others a general contraction. For the market it certainly doesn't matter because the masses are given their panem et circensis or bread and circus and they won't acknowledge reality with more and more social media apps to scroll through, living paycheck to paycheck, traffic, confusion, health, relationships and everything else we are facing with today there's no time for the truth so sit back don't speak and be a good little sheep you came here for the truth so let me unveil that for you i am so glad that you are here today because we're going to talk about reality we're going to talk about the truth we don't have any time for that other garbage that's out there we want to know what's going on the real deal there's always going to be distractions there's always going to be foolishness out there and if you want it by all means please check that out but in the meantime i don't know about you but i want to know what's really going on and i wanted to begin by taking a look at the federal reserve's balance sheet another week has passed and you can see for yourself the balance sheet has grown once again it won't be much longer until we're at 4.2 trillion dollars here in january 2020 it is expected to surpass what they had before 4.5 trillion something that i've been covering here obviously we've been watching this i've been monitoring it just giving you an update that connects in with this the printing press the Federal Reserve, the ECB, the BOJ, and the BOE have pumped in trillions of dollars into the global financial system in recent years. This is the G4 central bank balance sheet assets as a percentage of the GDP. And while that had come down throughout 2018, of course, as I have discussed many, many times before, you can see that this is starting to grow once again with the Federal Reserve, with the ECB starting to pump it up. And you could see what is going on as a percentage of the GDP. If you look at it on a nominal basis, of course, this is going up as well. So that's very important because stocks are going along with it and you can see that on this chart here global central bank liquidity you can see either the balance sheets of the major central banks or we can look at the global money supply either way they're both increasing and both move in lockstep with global stocks if we want to look at this with the S&P 500 and ultimately these have variances but you can see the general direction is the same when they print money when they expand credit when they allow it you know easy money policies whatever it is it's going to end up in one asset class or another in this cycle here we definitely see a boom in real estate not quite so much in the last little while but definitely have seen that in equities there's no doubt about it equities are at the level of extremes there's no way to deny this if you look at it price to sales if you look at it you know versus earnings if you look at it on so many different levels it has gone to extremes we have never seen before i'm not just talking about the level that that particular stock is at let's take those seven shares of amazon and you can you know really look at at this on a more objective level and you see what's actually happening it has nothing to do with the company it's got nothing to do with their earnings it's got nothing to do with any of the stats anymore it's all about this right here the central banks pumping up money now, I wanted to take a look very quickly here at the Federal Reserve's own website, their meeting minutes from back in December. Of course, I covered this as it was coming up. Everybody expected what happened. Nothing was really new, but there was some information that wasn't brought up in the media, didn't see it anywhere, and I wanted to cover it right now very quickly. I covered the repo situation basically every single day as this was unfolding and I was told that I'm very repetitive, I was told to shut up, I was told I'm stupid, but it doesn't really matter because the truth is out there for those who want to see it. I wanted to read you this and highlight one very important part from it. The manager turned next to a review of the money market development since October's meeting starting with an update on the implementation of the committee's strategy to ensure ample reserves. Everybody knows what was happening with this, okay, I won't harp on about it. Reserve management, purchase of treasury bills continued at a pace of 60 billion per month with propositions remaining strong and little discernible effect on market functioning essentially saying that this is the way they're going to go everything's been working fine at this point while these purchases accumulated the desk continued to conduct regular repurchase agreements repos operations in order to maintain reserves at or above the level that prevailed in early september this was the key that powell kept talking about september 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 they wanted to be at around that level anything less than that is a problem that's why they had the whole repo crisis supposedly repos outstanding from these desk operations totaled roughly 215 billion dollars per day consisting of both overnight and term operations if you can go out there and try to actually locate some legitimate source of information telling you what happened in that fed meeting 215 billion dollars per day the last time i covered the meeting minutes i think it was 
somewhere around 150 to 190 that they quoted here. But regardless, I'm showing you this right now, $215 billion per day. This is as of their December meeting, brand new information as far as we can get it. And to me, this is extreme because number one, the market needs the Federal Reserve to be there in what is supposed to be the most liquid market in the world. And yet it's seizing up. The plumbing is getting blocked up and they need that Drano in there to make everything work. $215 billion a day. There was also this in the meeting minutes. A few participants raised the concern that keeping interest rates low over a long period might, which I think is funny, encourage excessive risk taking, which could exacerbate imbalances in the financial sector. And you may also want to write that a little differently. Uh, I would call it bubbles. And that's just something I think that they would never mention. But here on the Money GPS, we actually get into the real information. These participants offered various perspectives on the relationship between financial stability and policies that keep interest rates persistently low. They remarked that such policies could be inconsistent with sustaining maximum employment, could make the next recession more severe than otherwise, or could strengthen the case for the active use of macroprudential tools to guard against emerging imbalances. Isn't it interesting that this activity that they are daily trying to implement could make it more severe when there is another recession? Is that a possibility? My goodness, coming right out of the FOMC meeting minutes. Of course, they'll never actually go in that direction to increase interest rates, to print less money. They're not doing that at all. However, it's just good to see that some people are actually raising good points. U.S. manufacturing closed out a tumultuous year with the weakest monthly performance since the end of the recession, with orders shrinking and factories continuing to dial back production, something that I've been covering here on this channel because it's so important. It's so key. I have a chart that coincides with this information. This is the article here out of Bloomberg. If you want to check it out for yourself, either pause the video or the link will be in the description. Here are the numbers associated with that. So what we're looking at is the green and the blue. That's the market PMIs and the ISM PMIs. The green is the ISM that has been heading down consistently month after month after month. And as I have talked about, the market PMIs had come up somewhat, but now have been going down again. And I will cover that, give you updates on that as I can. I just wanted to show you here that this has been a severe contraction. We're going back to levels we haven't seen since the financial crisis. It is a significant drop. It has been consistent. There is is a definite trend there. So I'm simply pointing to it. This is worse than what we saw during that 2015-2016 time frame. Some statistics kind of bottomed out right around that same level and have come up since, but the ISM has continued downward. Which one is right? Is it the market PMIs? Is the ISM? Well, that's up to the pages of history to decide. But regardless, I'm just covering it all. And of course, we can take from what we want from either. This is the equities pricing in strong rebounds in the PMIs. You can see how they have climbed significantly, whereas global, on a global sense, we are seeing that PMIs are still very, very weak. Employers announced plans to cut nearly 600,000 jobs from their payrolls in 2019. That's 10% higher than were announced in 2018. It's the highest annual total since 2015. So it's not a record-breaking year, but certainly it is significant in a time that we've seen stocks rising like crazy. We have seen the euphoria, the optimism. There are definitely two different pictures happening right now where we are looking at this incredible euphoria and optimism. And on the other side, we are seeing a dose of reality something's not right this is a chart that shows you that information specifically with bankruptcies in mind and it does give us an idea of what has happened it's particularly evident with retailers but of course this goes all over the place because of what's happening in hong kong you could see the retail sector plunging 23.6 percent that's the second biggest drop on record. The charts show us how very, very bad things have become. Tourism plunging there for obvious reasons. People are worried. People are concerned. Maybe they're going to choose somewhere else to go instead. A lot of people are rather leaving more so than moving in, especially since it's been dragging on for a long time. 
This is the chart that goes along with that Hong Kong retail sales volume year over year. Something that I wanted to point out very quickly is not just the information that shows us within the negative portions here, starting from earlier in 2019. We have to look at it as a trend. I mean, this has been going on for a long time. It's basically since the beginning of 2018. A lot of the detail I have seen has been adding up, showing us that we really hit a tipping point or a defining moment at 2018's real weakness that was experienced and never really recovered from that. The economy has never been strong since that point. 2017, things looked a lot different. It was the quantitative easing that was happening globally. It was the easy money. 2018 changed everything. First, we had the VIX that just was destroyed January. Then, of course, we had European stocks not liking it very much. Things turned around for the middle of the year but by the time we got into that fourth quarter everything was falling down and of course you know what happened ever since every single type of freight of transport has been down and i've shown you this before we're looking at air we are looking at land and sea this is rail and the association of the american railroads today reported a u.s rail traffic for the week ending december 21st shows us that rail traffic was down 10.5 percent compared with the same week last year i have some charts to make this a little bit easier you can see the u.s rail traffic Total car loads in this particular week, it is versus 2018, minus 11.5%. And you could see the breakdown there, whether it's forest products and grain and what, what have you. You look at it year to date, you could see versus 2018 down 4.8% look at Canadian rail traffic down versus 2018 minus 2.6% year to date minus 1.1% but just look at it and you see a consistent pattern appearing Mexican rail traffic total car loads minus 7.2% this week minus 3% versus 2018 so we see that pattern here is very clear North American rail traffic is down this happens to be this week minus 9.2 and minus 3.9 versus last year that's all for this video. I just want you to support me by giving me a thumbs up. I know a lot of people have told me that they actually watch the advertisements for these videos and really that does support me as well. I want to thank you for that. Truly appreciate everything that you do. It's an honor to bring this information out. There aren't too many people out there still trying to provide truthful information. I've seen a lot of channels that have grown tremendously bringing out some very, very unusual, strange information. I'm not sure where they're getting it from it's very odd but it's not for me to judge them they can do whatever they want so if you like this type of data definitely hit that thumbs up button let me know in the comments i read the comments all the time so thank you for that all the positive encouragement really keeps me going if you want to learn about business, about passive income, about making money, I created a free e-course. You can check it out at the Amazon GPS.com. If you want to learn about the financial system, about making money, about the asset classes, everything is located in these two books. They fit into each other like a lock and key. So definitely check them both out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, the money GPS.com. Hang on a second. Did you see this video? Truly very important. Got into a lot of good information. You could click on it and I'll see you there.